Indiana Jones, Indiana Jones. It's a podcast about Indiana Jones. Every movie, one minute at a time. Welcome back to the Indiana Jones Minute. This is the podcast where we show off our fancy book collection to the film Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, one minute at a time. I am Tom Taylor. And I'm the guy who makes sure the books are standing upright so the spines aren't getting all (laughs) twisted. Pete (laughs) Mowart. That that is true. That's all true. I'm the intern, Jerry Porter. And I'm Father David Mowry, and I'm making sure all the books are free of theological error. <laughs> Thank goodness. We, we, we showed up in the nick of time. <laughs> yeah. yeah Going to last about five minutes. Yeah, I've got a book for you here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, i got got to give this guy a chance. You know, you don't want to judge a book by its cover. No, oh, it's even, even illuminated manuscript. He's got a yeah. grail in Brooklyn he'd like to sell you. <laughs> uh, we are here to discuss Minute 21 of Last Crusade, which begins with Indy saying that the tablet is useless without the top half, and it ends with Donovan showing Indy his mint copy of the Chronicles of the Friars Exposition. (laughs) Well, uh, just a a real quick note. Uh, I think we have our first uh, Johnny says what he sees. (laughs) Right. Indy Indy says the entire top portion is missing. You don't say. (laughs) Don't say. Son of a gun. Yeah. Yeah, with that, basically with the blast shield down, I can't see a thing. Right. <laughs> the planet yeah. is all one big city. Yeah, my hat's in the place <laughs> of the missing part. It's baffling to me that that Indy is not intrigued by the mystery or the challenge yeah. that this artifact presents. Where are you even going to start looking? It's going to be a lot of work. you got to hire workers. Oh. you got to get up early. It's a nightmare. <laughs> your, your hands will get dirty. It's probably going to rain. <laughs> It's going to be a nightmare. Well, yeah, it's, <laughs> Donovan says just the same, an attempt to recover the grail is currently underway, and Indy just looks at him completely dumbfounded. <laughs> yeah. Like, he's just like, yeah. what? Uh-huh. <laughs> Why would you do How that? How come Army Intelligence didn't come and talk to me about it first? <laughs> you know, ab- about that, though, it is fascinating because it's like that this whole, you know, half slab missing MacGuffin thing, it, it, you know what? You know, this attempt to recover the grail is currently underway, and I, he's a nuts on the subject. <laughs> They're digging in the wrong place. <laughs> it's like we, we have this this piece that's only partially there, right? Yeah. And and it, once again, it's exactly the same as Raiders in that, um, you know, there's still a, an excavation going on underway. Yeah. Like Indy always comes in the middle of these things, and there's also a piece yeah. missing. E- either the medallion or half of this sandstone slab. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Donovan doesn't really address the fact that there's a piece missing because that does actually seem like it is kind of got a point. <laughs> right. Like, it's pretty none big. of the things that yeah. say where yeah. you should be digging are in this <laughs> in this tablet. Actually, yeah, wait. Where is he digging? He says there's like a, an excavation going on. He's digging yeah. in the wrong place. <laughs> yeah. Unless he's like rich <laughs> enough and he's got such a far reach that he could just be like, just blanketing the entire region. <laughs> He's digging yeah. everywhere. Yeah. I want you to comb the <laughs> desert. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? They, they don't tell you why uh, they 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 believe it's Donovan believes uh, it's in. They're supposed to be the other half is in Venice, Italy. Mm-hmm. At least we don't know why. That, I mean, they they find this piece north of Ankara in the mountainous region, mm-hmm. right? Wherever wherever you mine copper, and Which then still doesn't make uh, sense. <laughs> <laughs> and then I guess the rest is in Venice, Italy. Supposedly, yeah. Why? Yeah. I, I still don't understand why it would be like <laughs> so these two these two guys, these two knights, really, really old knights. I mean, maybe maybe we're getting a little bit mm-hmm. ahead of ourselves, but they come they yeah. walk out of the desert and one of them dies before they get to Boy, France. Their feet <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and one of them apparently makes it to France. But so is did the guy that died die in Turkey? And then the other guy, just after he got to France, was like, you know what? I'm just going to go back to Italy for a while. Like, I don't, I don't understand how the markers ended up where they ended up. I don't even understand how the markers got made, or why the markers got made. Why? I've, yeah, I've, 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 why I've seen this movie that. hundreds and hundreds, not hundreds. I've seen this movie dozens of times, and I always just sort of <laughs> gloss over all of this stuff. I'm like, okay, I guess there are clues, and there's things to follow, and that's what they're going to do. 
but like I've never, I, this will be the first time that I actually try to follow the pieces of this sort of Nancy Drew thing that's going on. Well, I, I, you know, I figured one of the brothers made uh, a grail out of straw. <laughs> yeah. One of them made a grail out of sand. Yeah, out of sand. I, I don't know why there's three of them, but it just kind of fits the whole lore business, I guess. Which is, it, but but what's fascinating to me is they say right here in this minute they're going back to France, mm-hmm. and so put that in your little bean. Uh, okay. They're going back to France. Mm-hmm. Okay. So so the night that well the knights are French. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we. Oui. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, most of the Crusaders were were French too, at least especially in the first. Most crusade. of the okay, yeah. yeah. Pope Urban II, when he was preaching the Crusade, he called the Council of Clermont, which is in France. He himself, being a Frenchman, went back and made the appeal to his fellow countrymen for the sake of protecting the pilgrims going to Jerusalem to uh, fight back the Seljuk Turks and to give assistance to the Byzantine Christian Empire. And so a lot of noblemen who made up the the knights of the crusade were French. And it was oftentimes a family affair. There would be Hmm. multiple members of the same noble family going off to fight together. So the three brothers going off to fight the crusades, that all tracks Mm -hmm. but oftentimes these nobles they wouldn't plan on coming back because you know just getting to the holy land was itself a risky proposition so they give away property and say okay well i'm gone so second cousin twice removed now you're in charge you get the dookie or barony or whatever Mm -hmm. and see you later maybe godspeed so there's a lot of legal inheritance issues that would be (laughs) Oh, sure. Tricky to work out once the brothers show back up. Oh, <laughs> yeah. you're alive. Uh, do, you want, uh, do you want the land back? You look kind of tired. How would you no. just take a seat? It's like yeah. every soap opera plot that ever happened. Like, oh my gosh, <laughs> Uncle Bernie's alive. Nobody would remember <laughs> Uncle Bernie because everyone that knew Uncle Bernie's been dead for 50 years. That's true. Like, yeah. if Uncle Bernie's 200 <laughs> years old. Right. <laughs> now, this is, this is something I thought about, and it's a question for uh, Father David here. It, this being the first crusade, uh-huh. do you think these brothers are, are going for the plenary indulgences? Well, the, the first crusade, um, it was it, scholars will debate the, the motivations for most of the, the crusades. But in the first one, there seems to be general agreement that most of the aristocracy, most of the nobles who went off as knights for the first crusade were motivated for pious reasons. Hmm. Uh, it wasn't just the it wasn't just fortune and glory. It, there was a <laughs> sense of service and a, a sense of putting um, their military skills to good use. Later crusades, not so much. <laughs> but the first one, the yeah. first one, you know, obviously, you're all, and, and humanity is a mixed bag, and the the church, as Pope Francis has said, is not a gymnasium for saints, but a hospital for sinners. And so <laughs> you get all kinds, even in the church, even in medieval Europe. So you're, yeah, you're going to have yeah. some people going for some self serving motives, but obviously these three knights were not in it for the fortune and glory because they had dedicated their unnaturally long lives to the service of the grail. It's like they were at Woodstock and then the other crusades were Woodstock too. <laughs> like sponsored by Pepsi. <laughs> I'm not sure how I feel about that comparison. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, uh, you know what I feel about the comparison of gymnasium? <laughs> that is pretty amazing. <laughs> I love that. I'm picturing that. I'm still not convinced that these guys dedicated their lives to the grail. Like, I, I'm wondering how they came across it in the first place. Like, did they go looking for the grail or did they just happen to come across this canyon and they're like, hey, check this out. Mm-hmm. Let's let's loot this building. Let's right. see what's in it. Or like, did someone tell them, oh, if you go down this canyon, you're going to find the Holy Grail. Like, I'm curious how they came across it in the first place. And it's then I'm very curious, funny. now that they have it, why they're leaving breadcrumbs throughout Europe saying how to get it. Well, why why are, why are those two of them leaving in the first place? Yeah. yeah are right. they tired of the third one's passive aggression? And we're, I mean, were the three of them just living there in that cave for like 200 years? Yeah. Or like, what were just they doing? staring at each other? Yeah. Well, I think the two that left are playing a prank. They're like sending people to, to bother their brother. <laughs> yeah. That's why they're leaving these, these markers. Yeah. All he wants is to be left alone. Yeah, go see Frank. Well, I thought, I thought the whole fir- first crusade, at least a big part of like, kind of like, and if you act now, <laughs> no. you know, at least to get people to go was that uh father correct me if i'm wrong here but if if you know there's sort of like if if you could kind of expunge all your sins mm. at once that was that that 
the plenary indulgences. Like if you go, whatever happened prior, you get a one time, you know, uh, get out of get out of hmm. uh, purgatory free card mm. or hell. Uh, I'm not I'm not familiar on the specifics around the first crusade, um, but if there was such an indulgence, it had a lot to do with the one way ticket nature of the crusade. <laughs> this is yeah. something you were going yeah. on and weren't really planning on coming yeah. back from. Well, and it made me wonder, the reason I brought it up, made me wonder, I wonder if these knights are maybe not such good guys. I don't know. Well, one of the things I, because I, I recently read a couple of, of really fascinating books about the crusades. And one of the things I was reading is that the way that the indulgence thing was written is it could, it, people interpreted it to mean, oh, our sins are going to be forgiven if we go on this crusade. And preachers were preaching the crusade with that information, even though that wasn't actually in a text that was promulgated. Like they were using oh. that as kind of a, a way to hook people into going on the crusade. That's how they get you. Yeah. Well, see, yeah, that's if you act now. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. But it wasn't, that wasn't necessarily how it was preached from <laughs> mm -hmm. at, at Claremont, but it was, that's how like people in Germany or people in other parts of the, of the, of Europe were saying, Oh, you know what? If you go, this will sweeten the deal for you. Mm hmm. Yeah, you know, look. If I made it all the way from France to the Holy Land with wearing chainmail, <laughs> I be I better have a lot of my life forgiven. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, that, that was the it. thing, though. A lot of these so, guys needed a lot of their life forgiven because knights in the Middle Ages yeah. were not nice mm -hmm. guys a lot of the time. Like mm -hmm. they were just nasty. Like they'd kill people, and they they had the right to kill people, and it was really mm -hmm. like a lot of them. This was very important to them because they had to be. They knew that they needed to be forgiven. Well, now, the, the, I guess the question here is, should I ever meet this knight in this movie, uh, The Last Crusade? <laughs> that seems unlikely. Oh, come on. I should, <laughs> years ago. He's been, he must be dead by now. Yeah. And for reference, Jerry hasn't watched the rest of the movie yet, so he's yeah. not sure what happens. <laughs> That's true. I'm kind of stuck. But, but so, so then he'll be French. Well, he might be movie French, which means British. <laughs> well, that's French. French. So, so, so. He's going to have a beret and a small mustache yeah, and but it'll expensive so, yeah. coffee that he's sipping from. he will have a British accent, but it'll be sort of French. That's what I was wondering here. Well, I, I, you know, I like here Donovan says, after the grail was entrusted to Joseph of Arimathea, it disappeared and was lost Oof. for a thousand years. <laughs> Wiped Whoosh. clean by the yeah. wrath of God. Yeah. <laughs> right. yeah. I mean, boys, you know, oh, we, got a, <laughs> we got ourselves a we got a real life shishak yeah. here. <laughs> so I, I, I actually love how this whole Holy Grail thing is starting to shape up because, it, you know, in Raiders, we got this Old Testament, big bad daddy Yahweh, and he's pissed and he's got a weapon of mass destruction. Mm -hmm. But with the last crusade, we got, uh, you know, this New Testament, Yahweh's son, Jesus, and we're searching for <laughs> eternal life. It's, it's like a whole new covenant, people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just wish it was a little less, uh, like, I, I, you know, they're, they're spelling out the entire, like in Raiders, they spell it, I'll constantly compare this movie to Raiders, because what else are you going to do? But, you know, in Raiders, you this- can't compare it to Temple of Doom. Yeah, you could try, but right. you'll get annoyed. <laughs> well, we're working out of the same book, at exactly. least. We're no, working yeah. out the same textbook for Raiders and for Last Crusade, the same textbook. Yeah, but, like, Indy tells the story of, like, the Ark and where it probably went and everything. You're like, okay, I got it. I, I mm -hmm. kind of, you know, he even draws on the board. You know exactly what the Staff of Rye is and what it does. You know, mm -hmm. The whole plot of the movie is laid out for you. And here I'm like- there was a there was a friar and there was like a where Joseph of Arimathea go? Why, where did he disappear? To? <laughs> yeah. So wait, the Grail is in a cave. I'm oh, there's a marker. Okay, I guess that'll solve everything. There's a marker. Oh, there's two markers. It's all gonna make sense. And it doesn't. Well, quite the other it. thing, this this scene handles poorly that Raiders did so well. This scene is two experts talking to each other. Yeah. About things they already know. Whereas <laughs> right. in Raiders, you had the two government officials who didn't know anything like well yeah. this is important but we don't know why they never yeah. went to sunday school here donovan and he like well as you know yeah. the night <laughs> found a franciscan <laughs> like, oh, well if you yeah. know this why are you having the conversation they're, they're two <laughs> history nerds trying to trump each other you know yeah <laughs> but did you know oh they're they're showing their nerd cred <laughs> yeah. i've got the friar's book <laughs> mint condition that's really it's actually really weird because you're, you're absolutely right they set that up as as like it's like we, we talked about a previous minute. Donovan has the, the tongue roll, I challenge you. 
Yeah. And there, there's there's sort of there, there's a tension there that's already there, and I, I, I it is strange. It's very different than Raiders in the sense that uh, Father David, you mentioned earlier, you're like. Indy is not really enthused at all Mm-mm. about any of this. Mm-mm. It's weird because they interject a couple, like he's when he's reading the thing, we said this last time, that you know when he's reading the, the stone, when he gets to the part about where the cup of Christ resides forever, whatever, he's got, he's got like his kind of Tannis moment mm-hmm. where he looks up and that obviously strikes a chord with them. But then he's immediately back to like, ah, bedtime stories, whatever, some friar, I don't know. Yeah. Dumb broken rock. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Maybe if it was still in the box, but no. <laughs> well, I've, I've got a question for you, Father David. Is there any, is it relevant that the friar was Franciscan? Well, yes, because there were only two kinds of friars or Dominican and Franciscan friars. Now, I don't know why they picked the Franciscan friars. I find it very ironic because so you, you kind of play out the timeline for this, right? Okay. First crusade ends around the year 1100. Uh-huh. The brothers are living in the cave, trying to work out who does the dishes for 150 years. <laughs> so they're leaving around 1250. The irony is there were already Franciscans in the Holy land in 1229. Mm. So this guy goes all the way to France and <laughs> finds a Franciscan. Now, the Franciscan order, founded by St. Francis in the early 13th century, St. Francis dies around the year 1226. So the Franciscans are a very young order. They are still very experimental. There's this weird new movement within the Catholic Church. Up to this point, you had monks who lived in established houses where they managed land surrounding the monastery. Donations were made to the monastery, and that was something that went back into the the care and maintenance of the land around them. They're very stable places where the fourth, fifth, and sixth sons of noble families would be encouraged to maybe go and make something of yourself, and maybe you might become abbot someday and, and do the family name proud. Franciscans and Dominicans, Dominicans founded by St. Dominic in uh, Spain or uh, earlier, or was that France? Oh, shoot. I don't remember. I think it was France. Um, but the Dominicans and Franciscans were this new order that were called mendicant orders. They didn't have houses. They didn't have established places to live. They were begging orders. They sustained themselves by adopting a life of radical poverty and relying on the charity of others. Hmm. Uh, the Dominicans did that in order to have the freedom to preach against heresies and um, false doctrines that were rampant throughout France and Spain at that time. Franciscans did so in imitation of St. Francis's own love of poverty, that by his uh, love affair with Lady Poverty, he might become more like Jesus Christ. So it's odd to me that these knights who are been who have been out of the ecclesial loop for 150 <laughs> years yeah. find themselves talking with this radical impoverished, non-landed, begging friar who has the resources and artistic (laughs) capability to illuminate a manuscript such as never seen in the 13th century. So I don't don't know why they chose the Franciscans. It would have been so much better to pick any other monastic order, or even if they had just said a monk. That would have been Uh fine. I don't know why they... It's one of those instances where they're reaching for a detail, and they kind of overreach and grab the wrong thing. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Well, unless unless it's another clue, like, oh, we chose the guy that chose the vow of poverty because it's going to be the chalice Mm. that's the most Uh simple. Oh. Oh, I like that. Follow the lack of money. Or they're just trying to bug their brother, (laughs) and they're trying to send someone back that they know is going to annoy him. Like, just, oh, we're going to go to find some new kind of guy with some new ideas. This will really bug our conservative brother. <laughs> He's the stodgy conservative one. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of uh, mendicants and or, or non-mendicants, <laughs> what's really weird is that, uh, you know, according to the Gospel of Matthew 27, 57, Joseph of Arimathea was a rich man. So... What's the deal with the Holy Grail and rich dudes? I don't know. Like we got, I mean, that that's what we know about Joseph of Arimathea, like not, not a whole lot, except that he's rich. Yeah. And then here we have Donovan. And what do we know about Donovan? Mm-hmm. He's well, rich. Well, knights were, for the most part, rich guys too. Like if you were a landed gentry, you were going to be rich. Mm-hmm. 
Well, I, I just, why, why would Jesus be cool in trusting this legacy to a rich dude? I mean, because Joseph of Arimathea, he's going to have to, like, he's going to be that camel trying to pass through the eye of a needle. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's a fair point. That, and, you know, the word entrusted is is a bit of a misnomer. I, I think Donovan might say the same things about the artifacts in his own collection. I was entrusted <laughs> yeah. with these statues of the Buddha. <laughs> well, we, <laughs> I'm glad you brought that up because on previous minutes we did talk about uh, Joseph of Arimathea being a super fanboy. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Not the cup, guys. Kind of co- <laughs> yeah, like collecting the dirty dishes from the Last Supper, and yeah, yeah. You give a guy a tomb, you think you're entitled to all of his right. uh, <laughs> earthly goods and effects. <laughs> Oh my God, that's one of my favorite lines of this whole podcast. You, you give a guy your tomb and you think you're entitled. Yeah. Yeah. It's a t- and then Jesus a only used life. it for like three days. So Joseph is like, oh, I thought I was in. <laughs> yeah, but that's good because then he could resell it. It's like barely used. Oh, that's true, yeah. Mm hmm. Oh, the stuff about yeah. the, the, the Holy Grail ending up with Joseph of Arimathea, that grew out of the Arthur legend. That was something mm. one of the medieval, medieval romance authors wrote mm-hmm. as sort of you know, trying to link together how, okay, how did the Grail get from Jerusalem to medieval France where Arthur and Sir Gawain and Sir Lancelot all would run into it? Like, oh, Joseph, sure, Joseph of Arimathea. Yeah, that makes yeah. sense. <laughs> yeah. He, he went to England or whatever. Uh-huh. Yeah. Out of, you're, yeah, you're like, sure. Sure. <laughs> I why mean, he did. Why not? I mean, old Joe? Yeah, he always wanted He always <laughs> talked about traveling, <laughs> going to the UK. Yeah. When he wasn't collecting blood and chalices, he was just talking endlessly about all the Anglophile stuff. Yeah, he was yeah, you know, he maybe maybe just wanted to head west. <laughs> yeah. But this, this yeah. brings me to one of my favorite parts of this minute. And one of my favorite parts of this movie is Donovan walks him over to this beautiful illuminated manuscript and completely makes up a story about it. I was going to, I mean, thank you for saying that because as we're talking mm-hmm. about all this, I'm like, no, wait a minute. Okay. Markers and, and, and knights mm-hmm. and, and friars. Like, is any of this story based at all in any of the actual history or legends that you would find outside of this movie? Well, the the Arthur legends are like, sure. not in, they're not in the Bible, but they're based on medieval legends. Yeah. But this book that he's showing him, not only is it not anything about these guys with the two markers, it's written, it's written in old French, and it's actually telling the Arthur story. Like, it talks about King Arthur and Gawain and Camelot and Lancelot. All right, good. I, I wasn't going crazy because I no. saw Camelot spelled with a K, but then with more A's than <laughs> yeah. were necessary. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this yeah. was like medieval French. And it's just retelling the, it's like part of the, the Arthur legend from the, the French stuff in the 13th oh, that's century. that's crazy. So it doesn't, there's no way that what this book is, is talking about the two markers. Maybe that's like a like a flashback or a side <laughs> tale or something, a story yeah. in a story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He just turned to the wrong. Well, page. What, you know, a, a question I had looking at this is, I, I and maybe this is for you, Father David. What, I mean, aren't most illuminated manuscripts in Latin? Yes. Uh, so this, I'm not, I'm yeah. not nuts. No, you're you're not nuts. <laughs> not uh, about that. Yeah, the reason okay. the reason for that being that most illuminated manuscripts were scripture. It was uh-huh. the Bible, and using the sure. Vulgate translation of the Bible, the illumination would have been to accompany that Latin text. Now, other stories, you know, such as the stories of the the Round Table and Arthur and his knights, they may have been illuminated later on, but that was after a resurgence of interest in those stories of courtly graces and the knights and their heroic exploits in mm-hmm. the twelfth in the, excuse me, in the thirteenth century, they wouldn't have cared about that. They wouldn't mm-hmm. have spent the time. <laughs> This isn't the important stuff. We we, we got we yeah. got tw- forty copies of Job to get through, and <laughs> we, don't have, we don't have time yeah. to fool around yeah. with these cockamamie stories. <laughs> forty copies of Job to get. Th- well, now, you know, I wondered, like, if if you're a monk and you have an illuminated manuscript, everything's pretty much in Latin until was actually the Reformation, and then they, I, I mean, or maybe further on down when they started using, uh, I, I, I guess, the vernacular or whatever, you know. Um, there would have been some translations into vernacular that would have been used for um, 
study purposes, but no official translation of the Bible would have been in the vernacular until after the Reformation. Ironically, that was also when illuminated manuscripts stopped being as common because that was when the printing press was Mm -hmm. invented. Oh, yeah. So you you have no longer a a need to rely on handcrafted artisanal scripture translations uh, when you can have the mass-produced Word of God uh, pumped out by Gutenberg's press. Right. Mm-hmm. Well, you're not, I mean, if you're going to take all the time to color this all up pretty, <laughs> I mean, you're not going to waste it on French. <laughs> we apologize to our French listeners. Well, I know, of course. Listen, listen, I got a B minus in French in college, all right? I got a B minus. <laughs> still smarting over it, huh? <laughs> I am. French in college? 25 years ago. I, no, because I had to. Oh. He lived in the French house. I had, they made us. Yeah. yeah, that's how I met Pete. We lived in the French. And here's the irony. Pete chose the French house. He chose to live in the French yeah. house. I just, I just picked it on the little, uh, on the little sheet because it was, it was singles. Yeah, that's that's smart of Jerry. That that hurt. I left the mark. <laughs> Pete, you and I were never supposed to be friends. No. <laughs> Something went wrong. That friendship is a fraud. Well, you know, Pete, you should feel good that Jared didn't walk out on you after 150 years. Yeah, and that's just true. Leave yeah. you alone to yeah. mind French house on your own. Yeah, perfect your British accent. <laughs> well, so so this this Grail it keeps resurfacing every thousand years or so, right? We 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 got uh, you know we got uh, a bedtime story with Joseph of Arimathea, uh-huh. and then uh, a thousand years later we get a bedtime story with three medieval knight brothers, mm-hmm. and then now. Indiana Jones is going to be his own bedtime story. It's the Last Crusade. Yeah, mm-hmm. well, yeah. yeah. Mm. It's like uh, well, well, that's. I mean, I I got to prepare myself. <laughs> <laughs> like if he if he finds this thing, you know what I mean. Well, you're bringing up a good point. Okay, so the stone that he just read it has that line about uh, you know where where the the cup of Christ resides forever and stuff. Right, which gives you the impression that it's never going to leave. Yeah, and then, I, or like if it never does leave, or when, how long has it been there, and has it ever left, mm-hmm. and how does that reality compare to like the Arthur legend and everything else, where people are actually finding the Grail or searching for it, and you know, and like, and so that makes me wonder, like, when did these, like the 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 friar in his text mentions the markers, mm-hmm. but that's all <laughs> he says reason. about it. He just yeah. says there will be two markers, like who, like you were saying, Father, like where are the, where did they come from? Why were they left? Why, not to skip ahead, why are they identical? Well, yeah, the <laughs> fact that they're identical means that some guy carried one all the way from Turkey to Venice. And that's a long way. That's a, that's oh, man. a long way. Oh, my way. gosh. And that's a heavy yeah. thing to carry. That's weird. Yeah. We'll get to that later. That's, I, got, I got questions. <laughs> if you... um. <laughs> if you lick your fingers while someone threw a thousand year old oh my goodness that that is <laughs> just <laughs> that is do he was out of champagne do you, do you, yeah. Yeah. i'm gonna yeah, yeah do, do you do you get do you get a thousand year old flu <laughs> yeah was that like was that name of the rose or something didn't that happen like name oh, of the yeah. rose like the pages were poisoned and like people yep. like died from it yeah, yeah. <laughs> But he he should definitely be wearing gloves, a to touch this. Oh yeah, his champagne yeah. stained fingers yeah. are touching the pages yeah. of that yeah. priceless yeah. manuscript. Oh no! All the acidity, yeah. And then he bends the page <laughs> when he turns the page. Like he's very, Ooh. he's really not careful with this at all. Yeah, it's almost like Indiana Jones is not a good archaeologist. Yeah. No, it's a bit like he's a clod and a buffoon. <laughs> yeah, if you look closely enough, he doesn't seem to actually recognize what artifacts really are when he sees yeah. them. So yeah, this is a dictionary. <laughs> this thing's broken. I can't read a word of it. <laughs> Stupid thing. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid dictionary. <laughs> well, do we have anything else for minute uh, twenty-one? Uh, oh well, yes, there oh. is. There what is. What do you mean, Jerry? Why didn't you speak up earlier? <laughs> if you had something to say, you say it. You're part of the show. Why it's not me? What? <laughs> what? what? This you just said? in from Professor oh, Christy Porter. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> New Covenant Rumpus, Spawn of Yahweh. <laughs> Is that a threat? I don't know. <laughs> no, it's a, you're, to be, I'm. You know, listen. I'm. I'm. I'm excited. We're all excited. Yeah. You know what I yeah, mean? I it's, you. We're, we're back. Here we are. We're using the old textbook again. Yep. And <laughs> we're now onto the New Testament. I'm with you. 
I quoted Matthew. <laughs> you did. I quoted I Matthew. Impressed. Come I was on, very thank you. Thank Getting you. Getting your Catholic brownie thank points. You. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, on the note of Catholic brownie points, uh, Father David, thank you for joining us today. Could you uh, come back oh, tomorrow? This is a pleasure. Because I bet we're going to have more questions and more things that we're going to have uh, to use you for yeah let me let me look at my schedule i'll have to i have to celebrate mass and then mm-hmm. i might have a couple house calls to make but if i can make it i'll be here all right we understand Excellent. you know you got work to do got to chisel of half of a stone yeah <laughs> right. i tell you gotta gotta proofread a friar's text uh, it's yeah. just it's never end <laughs> he got 39 more jokes <laughs> to go through <laughs> get your job <laughs> uh well father david is out there uh doing the good work uh you should do your good work and go to indiana jones and uh see what we got going on over there we have all of our episodes from the beginning of raiders to right now uh, we got some bonus episodes on there. We've got uh, stuff about all of our guests. It's a beautiful thing. And yeah, please come back here tomorrow for minute 22 of Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade here on the Indiana Jones Minute. Job! <laughs> <laughs>